So how should you invest in a market suddenly prone to wild mood swings? Here with advice is John Manley. He's chief equity strategist for Wells Fargo Funds Management. Great to see you again, John. How are Good. you? Very well, thank you, Tyler. Good to see you. Terrific. Is, is this what we're seeing in the last couple of days, the beginning of the widely expected correction that so many have been predicting for so long? I've never seen a widely correct, uh, expected correction actually occur. I think uh, I think this is a buying opportunity. I can't give you guarantees about one or two percent, but there's still a lot of money waiting to get in. The market still goes down very quickly on minor bad news, which says to me people are still itchy. Uh, they are feeling itchy, and they are also very nervous. They don't like this re uh, volatility. So, what should investors do, or maybe not do? during this phase of volatility? I think not pay attention to the volatility is the best thing. Decide where you want to be in a year or two years or how you want to retire. Set your portfolio up so you can afford to fund it. I think that's really important. Yield is a very, very important commodity going forward. One of the things I noticed, John, in your sort of model portfolio is that uh, generally as a baseline, you think 65 percent in equities is a good place to start, given the growth potential there. Uh, but as I understand it, you've got sort of 5 percent in cash and nothing, nothing in bonds with the remaining 30 percent or so in what you describe as alternatives. Why no bonds and what do you mean by alternatives? Well, we're in the process of moving in that direction. We still have some bonds, but again, we're not going to focus on, on high quality stuff. We're not going to focus on, on treasuries. There's just no value there. We think the spread product is very interesting at this point in time, but even that's not as cheap as it used to be. I think you need something to offset some of the volatility in stocks. I think more and more alternative investments do that, and we try to look at funds, for example, that actually do that sort of thing, that try and balance off uh, the volatility in the equity market with, with a non-correlated asset that is not in the bond market. Like what? Like what, John? Well, there are a lot of things. You can do long-short. I think that's, that's rather interesting. You can look at some commodities, both long and short again. Uh, there are all sorts of different little strategies that you can look at to try and get a little bit more than GDP, a little bit more than a CPI for your return. And you, you get lower volatility in that part of the uh, uh, portfolio. You get lower returns. That allows you to stay more comfortable in the yeah. equity market. Are there enough alternatives in that alternative space? Susie just asked you, like, what? Uh, you mentioned long, short funds and some commodity. Are there enough alternatives out there, either in the form of ETFs or mutual funds that are broadly available to individuals, as opposed to hedge funds that require uh, that people be accredited investors? The they're out there. They're out there and they are available to individual investors. I think uh, it, it, you have to look a little bit, but they are there. Uh, I think one of the things that's happened has been the democratization of, of investing to a certain degree. Uh, it doesn't mean higher volatility. Hedge funds is there to hedge. Hedge funds are there to offset volatility, not create it. John, you said that you're still a big believer in stocks. Uh, tell us a little bit more of where investors should be uh, putting their money, what kinds of stocks, and stocks that can withstand volatility. I think that, uh, well, first of all, we've been focusing almost exclusively on large cap for the last five or six months, and it's, it's been reasonably good. Uh, I still focus on large cap, but I would be less uh, less strict about it because I think you're going to see more M&A activity, and that's going to favor the, the mid-cap area. They've been passed over to a certain degree. When it comes to sectors, I, I still think we're going to start rotating down towards more cyclical names. We'll hold on to the uh, health care stocks for a while because we think they do have decent value and they do have some growth, mm -hmm. but it's more economically sensitive. John, terrific. Thanks, to, uh, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Great, great to see John you. John Manley with Wells Fargo.